Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Hard Time series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode, I hope to get some science in order to unlock the technologies we need, for instance, to get the rapier engine and perhaps some of the other things that uh, might make our space plane viable. But uh, that means looking through these contracts, we have some active. We uh, still need to grab science data from space around Kerbin, sort of embarrassing. Uh, but uh, we've got some planned flags in terms of Duna and an explore in terms of Duna and Ike. So maybe a Duna mission would be the smartest thing to do in this case. Otherwise, these other things don't really require any time frame. No deadline for them. So we can do them at our leisure. Yeah, I think uh, Duna would be the best thing given all these contracts for it. Uh, but first, I noticed that we have a Toriado Aerospike uh, contract uh, testing it landed at Kerbin. And that's easy enough, so I'm not even going to uh, think twice. Uh, since we are on such a tight budget, we should do all such contracts that we can. So uh, we've also got some planet flag on Minmus and the Moon. Um, two years and three years of tight if we want to try and make a Duna Ike mission this time. Uh, we'll, we'll probably get some later anyway. Let me uh, do the aerospike mission first and then uh, try and put together a Duna Ike mission and then we'll see while that Duna and Ike mission is on its way whether we can do these. Alright, so that's the plan. Okay, so here goes our toroidal aerospike test. Don't worry, there's no fuel in the canister. So uh, let's take a look at our contract screen. Landed on Kerbin. And what's any special note here? Just regular staging. Okay, here we go. That's it. That's tested. And we got 99 signs for that. Wonderful. Okay, let's recover this. And there we go, uh, got 100% of our parts back. Good job. And now let me put together a Duna Ike mission. Okay, so this is probably a bad idea, but we're gonna do it anyway. Uh, this is an adapted version of my Moon One Lander, uh, adapted for Duna. First of all, we've got six boosters instead of four. I've purchased the inline react, advanced inline stabilizer here because it's got more torque and I, I just wanna make sure that this thing remain stable as it goes up and can turn uh, in the vacuum because we might be using this stage to start out our Duna transfer. This is the main Duna transfer stage but also the Duna deceleration stage and this is the lander. We'll have to do separate missions to Duna and Ike. Uh, I can't possibly put the both missions on the same launcher because I don't even have the 2.5 meter parts so uh, yeah I mean I could unlock them but I'm trying to save science here so yes uh, we're going to be uh, doing two separate missions one to Duna one to Ike I'm not a hundred percent sure that the Duna mission is going to be able to return I've tried my best uh, I've even gone to the length of uh, not putting these uh, radio mount parachutes up here and instead putting a decoupler, so only this will be returning back to uh, Kerbin. We're going to be junking the rest of this. That costs more, but it means that we can do with a much smaller launcher, so you balance it out. Either we would recover this, or we wouldn't. And if you take a look at the relative cost, so uh, 10,000 here, if we dump this, that's uh, 9,000 uh, funds, I was about to say credits. 9,000 funds and you have to ask yourself, well, are we going to be spending more of that on the launcher, right? Because the launcher is going to be discarded either way. So if you make uh, make it heavier so that uh, we're going to need those extra parachutes to carry all this back down, uh, then the question is, do we need a larger launcher? And in that case, will it cost more than 9,000? So it's all like that, but I'm not too sure I've uh, calculated everything properly, but I decided to just spare the mass as much as possible. Okay, so I'm going to be going to the tracking station to make sure that we are in alignment with Duda, and then we're going to send our two missions over, and I'll catch you on the launch pad. Okay, so for the Duna mission, we're going to send Jeb. We, we only have four Kerbals. We have Jeb. Bill, Bob, and Ertop, who we rescued, and I've said that I'm going to 
only stick to uh, Kerbal's Eye Rescue as far as expanding our roster, if, if possible. And uh, we've, we've probably overrun the Moon or Minmus mission possibility, so we're not going to be doing that. And uh, keep in mind, we don't have docking ports, so that was not an option in this case. We weren't going to be able to uh, dock things together to refuel or anything like that. Anyway, uh, Jeb looks ready to go, so uh, let's go for it. I did uh, run a few lines from the boosters into the center, so that's why I just moved the center engine down. In the original configuration of the moon rocket, uh, we did not uh, have fuel lines. Okay, so here we go. Lots of thrust. Let's cut it down just a little bit. Okay, looking good so far. Nothing much to worry about with a rocket like this. We can throttle back a bit. We've got a pretty high thrust to weight ratio as the boosters run out. Okay, separation. Separation is good. Let's see our apoapsis. Okay, still heading up there. Full thrust. If I play my cards right, we could probably make the Duna transfer with just this stage, but we'll see. Okay, good orbit. And yeah, I think we probably have about a thousand Delta V left in this stage, we'll see. Let me plot our transfer to Duna right away. We'll send the Ike mission as well, but uh, I want to make the plot to see whether we're early or late or right on time. Okay, there's a moon rendezvous in the way, so I want to time warp around one orbit to uh, get rid of that, hopefully. Okay, I've got it to 11,000 kilometers, and that's about as good as I can do from out here, looks like. Uh, we're a little bit late, I think, in making the transfer, but uh, let's, let's try it out. Wow, I think we're going to have some fuel left in this stage. Excellent. Oh, that's a surprise. It was going up, but then it uh, gave us our encounter. That's about as good as we're going to get from here, I think. Let me quickly plot the mid-course plane change. It's not much to change. The descending node is zero but it is still a descending node. Okay, 78 kilometers. Now let's get the Ike launch up. And Bill will be in charge of the Ike launch. I forgot to do the science in orbit around Kerbin again. Uh, all right, uh, so Bill will have to do that. Let me change the staging here again. And uh, off we go. Booster separation is good, and we continue. Okay, in orbit, 90 by 87 about. And now let's do some science. What could we do that we haven't done? Log pressure data can't be done. Log temperature... Now somebody had said that if I transmit this, it'll work. Let me see. I, I don't know if this is possible. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. They need to fix that. They need to fix that and they need to fix the idea that you can test a rocket at landed at uh, Kerbin without any fuel. 
you need to have fuel attached in order to make a test like that so definitely need to fix that as well I know it's it's nice to have it like this for convenience sake uh, it's easy to fulfill that contract but let's face it that's not really a rocket test if you have no fuel attached so yes I would like to be forced to do things properly that's that's how I am okay that about matches the outward trajectory of Jeb's mission so this should be about the same nope not even close huh that's interesting what a difference a uh, few hours makes okay Bill has about an equivalent transfer to what Jeb had uh, 10,700 kilometers periapsis at Duna so I think this is doable and will probably match Jeb, Jeb's approach and hopefully we'll also be able to do it on this stage looks like uh, it might be that we should have put more fuel in the lander and less fuel in this uh, intermediate stage considering this stage is handling the transfers this intermediate stage will only handle the braking maneuvers at Duna and Duna's atmosphere can do most of that okay let's see how things are going up oh, past the target position oh uh, oh there's a situation where just turning changes things ah hate when that happens uh, it's one of those iffy things so I'll have to get into into um, interplanetary space before I can get a good read on this alright so uh, the plan is I'll take care of the micro plane changes off camera and then I'm going to uh, meet up with you in Duna Sphere of Influence with these two missions. Okay, hello everyone and welcome back. We are in Duna Sphere of Influence with Jeb. And Jeb is currently on a crash course with Duna, but uh, I can correct that pretty easily here. And uh, I don't really need to get him into orbit, but I suppose that would be the, the nice thing to do. It's a little bit hard to get a good number from out here though. I guess we should get a little bit closer in before trying any further moves here. Still using the center stage for the launcher. So here we go. Uh, well, let, let's get some science done, huh? I'm sure that'll count. So uh, as long as the craft is steady and he's not going to start sliding off of the thing uh... oh uh, yes he is watch out there EV report okay uh... I'm gonna keep that data and transmit once I'm inside okay now review stored data and transmit that okay 33 science We've achieved orbit around Duna before, I think. That's what that's telling me. Okay, but the, the important thing is we do get some science done. I don't think thermometer or barometer is going to help here, so continuing on trying to get closer to the planet. Okay, let's get to a better air braking height now. Doesn't really matter what our inclination is, per se. I guess we could make a token correction to that since we've got all this extra fuel we aren't coming in particularly fast I don't think
All right, Q Duna's atmosphere. I have not checked air braking calculator, so we'll see how this goes. Still reading a periapsis of uh, 13.7 kilometers. No apparent flame effects, but we are getting drag. We are slowing down. And we're now going up. Let's see if we've made orbit. Yep, there's orbit. So now the key thing is to land on Duna and transmit or recover scientific data from Duna. Tough stuff. But we've got... A, unfortunately, we've got the fuel in the wrong place. I would say we have a lot of fuel, but it's not all in the lander is the problem. Going to bring our orbit a little bit more like Okay, that's the end of that stage finally. Jettisoning the launch stage. Igniting the L V nine oh nine. And continuing with this orbital adjustment that I've been making. Okay, I think I want to land somewhere around here. So I'm gonna try for that sort of landing. Okay, that sounds about right. I suppose we could have him pop out just a sec. Keep my fingers on the appropriate keys. Make sure he doesn't drift drift off here. Okay, keep that data and board. And transmit that data. Okay, I think uh, we've got a landing spot. Let's go for it. Gotta kill v horizontal velocity first and start right now. I've learned my lessons from Duna landings past that I should not rely on the on the atmosphere too much and in this case I overdid the amount of this is not right at all overdid the amount of uh, fuel that I packed in so at least in this stage I did Okay, once again, Duna's surface makes it really hard for me to see what's going on, so I'm going to try and get this into a semi-hover here. While I look into EVA. Wow, 1,000 meters, okay. Alright. Gotta wait till 500 meters to ditch the extra can. Okay. Off it goes. So this engine has to get us all the way back home, which is tough. Wow, those horrible 0.25 explosions. Ugh. Okay, we've set down. Still got an okay amount of fuel, I think. Assuming my math prior to this was not too bad. So far, it's been pretty far off, actually. Um, thermometer. We'll keep that data for now. Log pressure data. Keep that data. And we're going to have Jeb uh, grab it, of course. Crew report. We can keep that data. EVA. EVA reports. Keep that data. Board. Okay, EVA. 
Let's just go down. Oop, something. Uh, the battery's obstructing him. Okay. Off you go. Okay. That thing we do. Take surface sample. Keep that data. EVA report. Keep that data. Plan a flag. Jeb on Duna. And the date. At uh, 50k funds. Uh, whoop. A bargain. Yes. But let's hope we can get you back safely, Jeb. That's part of it. I think it was about 50,000 funds. Okay, let's see now. Let's see the, there we are. Okay, let's see if you can get up to them. No real way for him to perch. Uh, take data. Okay, good. And take that data. All right. Okay. Yeah, I better just uh, hover up. Okay, board. Right, now I'm curious to see whether we can get into or orbit properly, so we'll do that before turning to Bill. Okay, everything seems good to go. Let's retract the ladder. How's our contract? Transmitter recover. We should transmit something. Let's uh, EVA report from Duna's surface. This one is cheap. Okay, I mean, it's only 24 science and it's 100%. Let's transmit that. That way we'll have the contract fulfilled. Yeah? Oh, well, this isn't... Te that wasn't technically from the surface though. Here it is also 100% so yeah there we go. Now we've got the contract fulfilled. Okay good. And we've planted a flag on Duna so that contract's fulfilled. Alright. Um, yeah, keep data, keep data, keep data. We've already, yeah got that okay all right okay heading off now Okay, that's above 60 kilometers in all directions. Uh, now I need to calculate how much Delta V I have left. 2.2 tons. Okay, so our remaining Delta V is 1,200 or so, a little bit over 1,200. So I think we're good to return home once we have the correct phase angle. I'm gonna leave Jeb in orbit and now turn to Bill, who is rapidly approaching Duna, and he needs to land on Ike. Okay, so here we are with Bill in the sphere of influence of Duna, and we've got an Ike encounter and a high Duna periapsis. This is not a good combination. Uh, we do need to try to air break in Duna a little bit, I think. I guess we could force the issue and just get into orbit around Ike. It's not the nice way of doing things. Um, yeah, besides, we're going clockwise right now. That's not right at all. For, so we're going to have to change that. And that'll probably eliminate our Ike encounter. 
Okay. So, time for the scenic approach to Duna. Okay, with a little help from Mission Command, Bill is actually approaching Duna from the correct side. Jeb, not going retrograde, going prograde instead. But we must not land on Duna. We are trying to land on Ike and planting a flag there, so be careful, Bill. Our periapsis reads a relatively high 14,600 meters. There's a big mountain right here. Not quite in orbit yet, but it looks like it's curving around. Oh, oh this their Ike encounter is possible here. Let's see what happens with that. They seem to be hitting one every now and again. Like that. And then it goes around. Sort of like a roulette wheel or something, I don't know. Some other game. Come on, just stay there this time. Well, that sort of perturbation of the orbit that Ike specializes in. Okay, I've got a burn out of Apoapsis. That'll get us a nice little uh, rendezvous with... Uh, Ike here. Take a look at that sort of orbit. I love what Ike does to orbits. It's always very interesting to watch. Wow, our correction burn seems to be occurring pretty far out here. You can see Ike and Duna there. But, whatever works. Okay, that will do. Let's get uh, uh, let's get Bill over there now. Okay, Bill, welcome to Ike's sphere of influence. Please get out and tell us what you think. Oh shoot! Oh darn! He's done that thing where he uh, he lets go. Ah uh, da. Now this is going to annoy me. Right, right. Okay, uh, while you're out there, do the EVA report. Keep that with you. Forward. Okay. Bill got back on board finally. So if I do a crew report and transmit it, can I do another crew report afterwards? Let me just try it. Well, it gives me the option. So we'll see about that. But for now, I need to get into orbit around Ike before it spits me back out into a crash course with Duna. Okay, retro burn for orbit. That's the end of that stage. Okay, we really need to focus on Ike here. Okay, well, looks like an orbit to me. Uh, contract agrees. Uh, yep, and we've got the, that part done. So now just landing on Ike and planting that flag and getting some science. So, definitely want to land on the bright side. This, this, this patch looks good. I like... Uh, 
light patches for visibility's sake. Initial descent burn is good. Now let's get some lights on. Landing gear down just in case. Let's go to our landing location. I sort of like this area actually. Okie dokie on the sense. Let's see what our altitude is, radar altitude that is. Uh, still above 3000. I'll just stay in this view until it actually uh, budges. You could add a token amount of thrust to make sure our descent speed doesn't go too fast. Okay, uh, it's going down. I want to see... That's 2,500. Okay, that gives me an idea. So looking for about 5,300-ish. Okay, I'm gonna ditch this uh, stage here. Oh, I better fix this staging error. And then, there we go. Okay, that's a good landing. All right, uh, crew report. We can transmit that to get the transmit or recover scientific data from the surface of Ike and so our contract is complete for that but we do have to do the plant a flag and let's also make sure to log temperature and uh, pressure can't be done okay so EVA bill EVA bill he's drifting up again Okay, uh, come on, get that EVA report inside, now I'll get back outside, and just pop off, and there we go. Now, take the surface sample, keep that data, EVA report, keep that data, and plant a flag. Okay, Bill on Ike, same date. Could have, oops, probably done this without the whole Duna package. Indeed, he's right. Uh, we could have done this without saying the same rocket that we sent to Duna. Seems like a bit excessive for Ike. Now let's try and get the barometer and thermometer readings without bumping into it. Remember this part isn't coming back down with us on Kerbin. So we gotta... And that's actually... Uh, oh, he knocked himself on the battery. That's actually one reason why we probably shouldn't have gone with this version. For Ike, uh, we could have uh, brought everything back down. Take data. Okay, I think he's ready to go now. So let's uh, launch, yep. Yeah.
And that should be good enough. The orbit is 27 kilometers by 31 kilometers. And we have all the fuel we need for a transfer back to home. So now I'm just going to uh, plug away and continue on this. Let's see. Make sure. Oh, uh, Duna is sort of uh, eclipsing the sun right now, so we're not recharging. But anyway, let me go back to the Space Center to find the correct time for transfer. Okay, so I've completed the time warping so that we have the planets in the right locations for the transfer back, but I think I'll handle the transfers in the next episode. So, uh, with that, uh, thank you for watching. In the next episode, we are going to be bringing them back home and reaping the science rewards and getting the rapier unlocked as a priority and also anything else that we might uh, be able to unlock because of the science. And then I guess we'll try out that uh, the plane and see whether putting the rapiers on will allow it to get into orbit around Kerbin. All right, so that is the plan. And with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.